Every Christmas, I make a toy weapon for my little nephew. This year, he asked for a katana. If I made a long, thin blade from solid wood, it would warp and twist. So I'm going to laminate three thin pieces of wood to make something more stable. I chose oak for the center because it's tough and springy, and I'll use some reclaimed cherry for the outside. Cherry has fine grain, so it won't chip or pick up dirt. The finished blade is going to be only a half inch thick, so I need three very thin slices of wood. The table saw is kind of slow for this work, but it's going to give me flat, straight pieces ready for glue up. As I was gluing these pieces together, I got to thinking about how traditional Japanese blades are usually made from laminated steel, and then they're polished to reveal those layers. My wooden katana is made from layers, and that cherry should give me a really nice grain. It'll look at least a little bit like pattern welded steel. So then I thought, anybody can make a stick of wood in the shape of a sword. That's not hard. Traditional Japanese swords don't just have an impressive blade. They have this whole amazing system of interlocking parts where the blade and the guard and the handle fit seamlessly together and everything is locked in place by tiny bamboo pegs. It's an ingenious system and I think I should copy as much of that as I possibly can. My designer, Lucas, looked at some swords and made me this printable template. His design was a little bit narrow, so I just printed out a second one and put them together to get the width, and then I glued the templates down to my wood. If you'd like to have printable templates for all the parts of this project, stick around to the end of the video, and I'll tell you how to get them. Having a template makes it easy to cut out the shape, a lot easier than just trying to follow a pencil line. I do this part slowly and cut really close to my line. A little extra time at the saw will save a lot of detail work later. Bandsaw work is always a little rough, and a big belt sander is the perfect tool for fairing those curves and blending the different parts together. I have an aggressive 60 grit belt on the machine, so I have to go lightly. The sanding scratches are deepest on the back of the blade, but a few strokes with a spoke shave cleans everything up without changing the shape of my work. I also had some unexpected wormholes in that cherry, but I just filled them in with sawdust and super glue. Instead of trying to hide these flaws, I'm going to highlight them and make them part of the finished project. Next is shaping the bevels. Here, I'm using the finger gauge technique to lay out lines to guide my work. Using my hand as the gauge allows me to easily follow curves and keep the shape organic. I could do the bevels on the belt sander, but that's risky. Using a spoke shave is slower, but it slices the wood and gives me a clearly defined bevel. The sword is tricky to hold on a furniture making bench, so I get creative with clamps and holdfasts. As I slowly carve away the excess wood, I'm letting the shape develop, constantly checking the proportions and curves as I work down to my lines. Shaping the tip is a real challenge, so I break out the shave horse and hold the blade by the body while I carry the bevel around the end. This part of the blade is called the kasaki, and it has a specific geometry. The shave horse makes it surprisingly easy to cut. A real katana would also have a metal collar called a habaki to reduce stress where the blade meets the handle. The habaki also allows the blade to fit tightly into the scabbard. I'm going to make mine by gluing together several tiny pieces of walnut. The blade is a complex shape, and wrapping those pieces around it requires careful fitting. Each piece has to be glued in one at a time, and then I spend a long time trimming and shaping the finished piece. Throughout the whole project, I kept looking at the hibaki and feeling like it was too thick and chunky. Little by little, I trimmed and shaped it until I had a slim and fitted design. A real katana has a guard called a tsuba. These are often highly decorated. They're like little works of art all by themselves. And looking at pictures of these got me really inspired. So I decided to stretch out and do something a little extra creative. I started with a thick scrap of aluminum, colored it in with Sharpie, and scribed a basic ellipse shape. Aluminum is perfect for these projects because you can cut it with standard woodworking tools. The bandsaw gives me the shape, and I clean it up at the belt sander. The basic ellipse would make a traditional guard, but I want to do something more, so I cut in these little curved notches to transform my ellipse into more of a clover shape. Over at the vise, I use a series of files to refine that shape and smooth out the curves and edges. I also use triangular files to extend those notches up across the face of the tsuba. Adding these details makes the piece look more organic and natural. Of course, the tsuba also has to fit over the tang, so I needed a rectangular hole. 
I can use the drill press to make several holes right in the middle, but then there's the long process of filing these holes open and turning them into a rectangular opening. I do enough of this work that I'm thinking about buying a small metalworking mill for the shop. Even a small mill would do this job in minutes instead of hours. I use a small round rasp to remove most of the waste and then switch to this square file to define my edges and corners. After a lot of work, the tsuba slides right on and I'm ready to work on the handle. The handle, or tsuka, would traditionally be a multi-piece construction made of wood, manta ray skin, silk thread, and other materials. How do I know all this? I watched a video by Walter Sorrels. He is one of my favorite YouTube knife makers, and he has an amazing video that shows all the details of the system of a katana, how everything fits together and works so beautifully. I will link to that down below. Now, I can't replicate exactly those traditional handles, but I think I can do something pretty close. The idea is to build up the handle from thin pieces of walnut. I'll make something that slips over the tang of my blade and then shape it. The handle is just a basic box, open at both ends, and I've left the pieces thick. I trim the end square and then start planing it down. I'm working the thickness of the faces and beveling the corners to get a comfortable grip. Even with a table saw, it's not always easy to make such thin pieces, but once they're glued up in a structure like this, it is easy to plane them down and get exactly the shape I want. The finished handle might be the most delicate thing I ever made out of wood. It's almost weightless, and it probably looks too fragile, but it slips right over the tang and locks the tsuba in place, just like a real handle would. It's exactly what I was hoping for. Oh, but that end looks just terrible. I need to finish that off. I have a pile of exotic wood scraps, and I don't even know what wood this is, but it sure is hard. Shaping little pieces can be tricky, but I'm just using a bench hook and a smoothing plane to trim each edge and get the dimensions. This gets me close, but the final fit needs to be perfect. I can't glue this piece on until the whole sword is assembled, but a couple dots of super glue hold it in place temporarily while I trim it for an exact fit on the handle. Super glue is strong enough to hold the work, but it's also brittle, so when I'm done, I just slide a stick down inside and pop it off. Now, this piece is ready for final assembly. Here's where it's important not to rush. I am dying to put the whole thing together, but now, while the project is still in pieces, I have the flexibility to add all those little details and touches that'll really make the final piece shine. I sand the blade down to 600 grit. A real katana would have a wavy tempering line called a hamon. I'm not gonna have that exactly, but I do sand into that center strip of oak and reveal the laminations just a little bit. Next, the tsuba is all scratched up. I use my table saw to keep some sandpaper flat and take that aluminum up to a 1500 grit polish. I want the handle to have contrast and look dramatic, so I'm mixing up this aniline dye. It's much darker than any stain and gives my handle that ebony black color. Combined with the fine grain of the walnut, it looks classy. I want the details of the blade to pop as much as possible, so I'm doing a coat of boiled linseed oil to bring out the grain and highlight those wormholes. The grain of that cherry does look just a little bit like the pattern of laminated steel. For protection, everything gets two coats of oil-based polyurethane. I've thinned it down a lot. I want a finish that's going to soak in and support the wood fibers, not a heavy coating that's going to chip as soon as it gets hit. Fun fact, all the parts of a real katana are held together by one or two tiny bamboo pegs. Really, this is what holds the whole thing together and keeps the blade from flying off the handle. And I've got some bamboo in the shop, so... I drill through the handle and the tang at the same time, cut a little piece of bamboo, and I'm ready to go. As I'm putting on the glue, I find myself surprisingly nervous. I mean, after all this careful preparation, it's not like things can go horribly wrong right at the last second. That never happens. My handle is too delicate to be held on with the peg by itself, so I have to add some glue. But it's a very thin coat, and as I slide the handle on, the glue starts to tack up almost instantly. I get it about 99% of the way, and then it freezes solid. This isn't close enough, and that aluminum guard is rattling around all loose, and I have got to get this thing fitted. So I hit it, and I hit it with something bigger, and that guard is still loose, but I suddenly get an idea. The hole I drilled for the peg is almost lined up. It's close enough that I can get the tapered tip of this chopstick into it, and then wail away on the back end. 
Driving the bamboo through those misaligned holes finally pulls the handle that last little bit into place. It worked. Now you might be thinking, wow, Rex, you did a really good job of not panicking in a nerve-wracking situation. And you should not think that, because while this was going on, I totally panicked. I was absolutely freaking out the whole time. But while I was freaking out, I kept trying things. That's what matters. Let's look at the finished product. Every year, I do one of these wooden weapons, and I mostly build furniture, so I have to work differently and come up with lots of new solutions to weird problems that I never have in my day-to-day -day work. The really tough thing is that I only get to make each of these weapons once. The first time you make anything, it's not going to be great. Repetition is the real key to success. If I made this twice more, I could make it perfect, but it's still pretty good. I hope my nephew likes it. This project was a lot of work, but it was also a lot of fun, and it took me back to the early days of this channel when I made all sorts of just weird creative projects, did a lot of fabrication stuff, before I focused so much on furniture. Stuff like this is a lot of fun, and you might want to make one of these for a little person in your life, or for yourself, I, I won't judge, and we'd like to make that easier for you. So we've come up with a set of measured drawings, and they aren't just like our normal plans, they have printable templates. So you'll have all the major pieces that you can just print out, paste on to a material of your choice, and cut them out. You can make something exactly like the one I made, but it's going to be a lot easier for you than it was for me. And because the holidays are coming up, we've decided to make these drawings and templates free. Free for everybody, no strings attached. Just go to rexkruger.com slash store and scroll down to the bottom of the page where we have a bunch of other free plans, and you can grab as many of those as you like. And because it is the holidays, we're going to put all of our plans on sale. All the plans are 50% off. That's all the shop projects, all the furniture projects, all the workbenches, and all the shop-made tools. It's all half off, but only until Christmas. So go on over to rexkruger.com slash store and get that half-off deal right now. Christmas is coming, and you should give yourself a little something. You deserve it. And of course, these videos would never be possible without my patrons on Patreon. And I, I mean that literally. Like, I literally couldn't make these videos without my patrons. And I appreciate them so much. If you'd like to be one of them, go on over to patreon.com slash rexkruger and check out all the rewards we have for the people who make this content possible. Now, Video's done, and it's time for me to go make the thumbnail. So I think it should be, yeah, I think it should be like this. Oh yeah, yeah, something like that. And then uh, I should look at the blade and make YouTube creator face, like. Yeah, that, that's good, right? That's a winner. Everybody's gonna watch this video. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go do that. Happy Thanksgiving, see you next time.